The latest example of the mysterious paint-like purple coating on Mars rocks was exposed when Perseverance blew away reddish dust from this rock slab. In a strange twist, that action may be the opposite of how it forms on this episode of Mars Guy. Just after departing the treacherous boulder minefield laid down by ancient raging floods that I presented in episode 141, Perseverance returned to the more benign slabs of fractured bedrock in the land known as the Margin Carbonate Unit. Here's Mars Guy for scale. It stopped just long enough for a quick look at this rock, which was conveniently in reach of the robotic arm. In a move that's been done only a few times previously, Perseverance used its gas dust removal tool, G-Dirt, before inspecting the rock with its instruments, something more typically done to clear away the tailings after an abrading operation. But apparently that resource-intensive effort was not planned for here. The result of G-Dirt use shows what is commonly observed on Mars. A layer of light reddish dust covers a darker, grayer surface but closer inspection with the arm-mounted Watson camera reveals a mix of gray and purplish hues, or maybe more accurately, a burnt henna hue. Here it's pretty hard to tell that the irregularly shaped purplish patches are a coating, but Perseverance has spotted them in many places since the beginning of the mission, where it's unambiguous. The best example comes from the place where Perseverance collected its first two core samples, Surrounding the abrasion spot are thick blobs of purplish material that are not found inside of it. And along the edge are places where this material has been chipped away, clear evidence that it's a coating on the surface. Recently published results are now helping to show what this stuff is. The SuperCam instrument used its VIS-IR spectrometer to measure this spot. This produces a fingerprint that shows how different the coating is from the rock underneath, which is not really a big surprise. What is a surprise is how similar the coating is to regular old Martian dust, which is brighter but otherwise shares a nearly featureless spectrum. This featurelessness is actually pretty diagnostic of dust. So now it's looking like purplish coatings are made from dust and not much else. There must have been at least some small amount of water involved to transform it from a loose powder to a coating. And this must have happened in geologically recent times because the coatings occur on rock surfaces eroded by wind, so coating formation is outpacing erosion. There's probably chemically reactive salts in the dust that help transform it to a coating with the addition of a little water maybe from melting frost or snow during periods of high obliquity. It's likely that some of the core samples collected by Perseverance for return to Earth include bits of the purple coating, and a sample from a sand ripple likely includes plenty of dust. Whether reddish dust transforms into purplish coatings should become clear with analyses and labs on Earth which certainly will help transform our understanding of Mars.